In other words, we need heaven's help here. And we are asking the Lord to bring heaven's help here. And we're asking the Lord to bring new here. And we also have to know this. We're living in, and one of the pay words is it's a Passover era. So how do we cross over and keep crossing over? It's not just about crossing over. See, look what the Lord did at the beginning of this pay era. That's why we could pretty well prophesy. I I wrote a book called Passover Prophecies. We could prophesy because we knew it was going, one of the pay words is called uh, Passover, Passover. And it's a pay word, and what it meant is you'll either limp forward or you'll leap forward. And I think the first two years of this era, this decade that we're living in, the enemy tried to make us limp. But I want you to say out loud, we're ready to leap on. And I see people like John and Cheryl, the Rosellis and others, and Jody, they have kept that remnant moving so that even though the enemy would love to wear you down, you're ready to leap forward. And with that, you also have to know that you're leaping into this intense war. Now, why would I say that? Because in Revelation 12, anytime the news being birthed, the dragon rises up. And the dragon rises up. It sits there for three and a half years trying to stop the new. Now, I am here to say by August of next year, New York City will change. I'm here to say... The government will change. I'm here to say the highway of righteous power that God brought into this nation through this state will return. But I say it won't just come from Buffalo. It'll come all the way from this island and meet head on with a vortex. So see, if we don't speak these things now, we don't see these things. And so that becomes really important for us. Now, I believe... There's lots of Passovers through the Word of God, but this year is about the promise. If you do not decree by your mouth that promise, if you don't speak it, I watched Daniel and Amber, they're, they're building a new house, and they have to go out there, the warfare they have, they have to speak, and they have to decree, and then they have to watch the walls, the framework come up, and then things just form the way it's forming. See, that's how our promise works. I think sometimes we say, well, God said this. Well, he'll just have to do it. It really doesn't work like that because you're building in this year that framework for your promise. That's why I knew if we didn't come and do this in all of these boroughs, we would not have surrounded. See, I wouldn't have a good conscience if something happened. Because God doesn't do anything without first sending his prophetic remnant in and his prophets in. I would not be able to look up at the Lord and say, well, I wasn't willing to go. I even got some article somebody sent me yesterday and said, I think they're going to have a nuclear attack on New York. And I said, that's right where I'm supposed to be. See, you have to think like that. And if you don't go and if you don't be where you need to be, to push the enemy back, then all of a sudden, if the enemy comes in, it's like a flood, but it's going to affect each one of us in a way God never intended. So we say to New York City, from Staten Island, 
how you would love to come into this whole territory, push back the kingdom of God, you will have no right to, and there will be blockade after blockade after blockade coming against you in the name of Jesus, stopping your movement in New York City. Now, I'm going to end, and then I'm going to have some of these people come up and prophesy to you. Because I believe that's why we're here. I'm going to ask our worship people to come back up. Now, I want to leave one thing about the new. See, when you look at two people in the Word of God, Hannah and, uh, well, really, there's three women I always look at, other than the one you just spoke about. I look at Ruth and I look at Hannah, and I look at Esther. See, they knew there had to be a time to, to stand, to gather. I, I love, I think I love Esther because she had been preparing for a year. She had been in secret for a year. Then all of a sudden, Mordecai calls her out and said, if you don't go in before the king... We're going to all end up dead, including you. She said, well, I know if I go in, I could die. And he said, well, you're going to die one way or the other. (laughs) So you might as well give it your best shot now so that you have the opportunity to change the course. Well, she does, and God favors her. See, you don't know that us gathering tonight isn't putting a whole new favor on the entire city. And then as we go from place to place to place. But remember, he asked Esther, what does she want? What do you really want? She said, well, he said, you can have up to half the kingdom. She said, well, I really want you to come to my party. And I want you to bring him with you, Haman. In other words, I believe when we operate rightly, we have right to look our enemy in the eye because the table's been prepared. And we're able to say, you've always tried to come in, but God had a people before you this time. God had a people that he brought together in this Methodist church building and every one of you coming in gains some sort of new favor so you have access based upon what you ask. See, there's something that happens when we obey. Every one of us, we're going to each have a supernatural access. You're going to have an access to go into a place in New York you couldn't get into, and then you'll say the right word at the right time, and things will change. You're going to have access. I see it on you. You're going to have access. You're going to have access. You're going to start seeing it happen to you because we came tonight and said, the enemy's not going to rule in this region anymore. And then there was Hannah. She just got desperate. She couldn't have a baby. She couldn't ever bring forth that which God wanted, what God wanted brought forth through her. So she got desperate. And, you know, she went in before the Lord and to the altar and just agonized. And even this ungodly Eli, who had once been godly but lost his way, he knew her expression was from the Lord. And he said, God's going to give you what you ask. And all of a sudden, that womb came alive for the future. I believe tonight as we stand up, We're going to ask God to make the womb of New York City 
once again alive to birth the new in this area. And don't think church. See, it's not about church as we've known in the past, the Methodist church, the Presbyterian church. It's about all of a sudden how he gathers a remnant and he says, tonight, I see that remnant gather. And just because they were obedient together, I will now hover over. And that's what he did to Mary. Holy Spirit hovered over. We decree tonight, starting in Staten Island, that a hovering power and presence of Holy Spirit has begun in all five boroughs of New York City. We decree a new hovering tonight. We decree that the enemy's plans are being thwarted. We decree new access for God's people tonight. We decree new favor over God's people tonight. We also say the waters are swirling in the heavens and life is rising where life has tried to be stopped. We decree every strategy set in this area to stop life will be confronted over the next many months. And Lord, we say by August of next year, New York City, it will be heard it looks totally new and fresh again. Let's give a shout and thank God for what he's doing.